Welcome to Plymouth for our third Grand Prix of the season. There you go, the F-50 fleet's being assembled, and while that's happening, some of the best sailors in the world are seizing the opportunity to go and visit their adopted local sailing clubs. Looking, Looking great there, guys. Good. Okay, and then trim it as you come around. Get that bang, bang off as well. I knew Pete and Blair when, you know, they started winning regattas and then even in a pretty early age, Pete was standing out as being someone pretty exceptional and then uh, Blair was living up in Kerry Kerry and doing phenomenally well. Do you have any tips, like, to stop it getting caught? Just trying to be quick on the retrieval line so it doesn't blow too far to leeward if it's yeah. on the a port hand rounding. I thought as they were very quite different people and Pete would love to get into the details of the boat. And then Blair, he's a very natural sailor. Yes, Stevie, I think what's really interesting to me is to see how Pete and Blair have decided to put together the SailGP team over a year ago. They chose to stick with their old crew, a, a crew of sailors that they've known since childhood. And boy, oh boy, this crew has won some races before. Smoke <laughs> They've all beaten each other over the years. You know, we don't have anyone that's joined the team that hasn't beaten each other before. So there's a lot of trust or mutual respect for each other. Now it's been the key is how do we get all these talented people to work together? <laughs> there are two options if you want to enter South GP. You, you buy experience. So you find sailors in the league that have already done events and seasons uh, in other teams. Ben Ainsley is a good example of that, immediately at the front of the fleet. Or you can do it the way that you know Peter and Blair have done it with the New Zealand team and not a single person on their boat has done any SAR GP until they began last season. So what time do you want to go up? Are they going to the boat now, are they? Yeah, they are. Race one will start in a few minutes, Stevie, and every team is under pressure. But New Zealand being so close to their first final in Chicago and choking in race five really need to perform here in Plymouth and find redemption. Alex, where are we watching from? The media centre. OK. Right, in here. OK, great. Let's go. Do you want to sit right here? Are we going to be blocking you guys if I sit here? Yeah. You sure? First race of the Grand Prix, Stevie Gate 4 and New Zealand is fighting for the lead. The French are coming in fast. They turn the boat on board New Zealand, but no, it's too close. Oh, no, 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 that's too close. It's going to be a penalty on New Zealand. That was an avoidable penalty, Freddie. Why do they always do something? This is the umpires, penalty New Zealand, relative France. Oh. Here, Craig, we're miles behind of here. Are we, uh, yeah. Right, turn five. Come on, that was an avoidable penalty, Freddie. I know, Stevie, but I'm noticing a subtle difference from the last two Grand Prix. I've been listening to their onboard comms, and clearly they are talking more. Their communication is noticeably busier. I think when you've got a coach listening to everything that's going on, it's uh, pretty clear to, to the coach what might be missing. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ray Davies has really pushed the team to have more communication, find out who's responsible for saying what, and make sure that information is delivered, especially at times under pressure. And we've learned some lessons about ourselves as sailors and athletes. So we've stripped it back to basics and we're working really, really hard on the, on the fundamentals, just really focused on simple yacht racing and sailing well. Stevie, listen to Blair to compete Burling. They see it coming, they talk about it and they are now planning ahead. This opens the door for Burling. New Zealand will have an opportunity here. Look at the speed. Beauty, back into second. Really tight to 100%. The guys are doing a really, really good job of communicating, thinking ahead in the race, speaking at the right time, um, not getting too wound up. When I listen to the onboard comms now, you can hear so much going on, which is actually super critical. Well, it's race three and the New Zealand Sail GP team are well ahead. They're controlling the race and things are really starting to work out for the Kiwis, Freddie. Well, I think something is causing the difference in the, in the New Zealand team. One thing is for certain, watching the video, Pete Burling is very focused on driving that boat fast. And in previous races, I've seen him looking around a lot, 
dealing with a lot of things is really trusting the people around him so he can focus on driving that boat as fast as he can. Wow, Freddie, race five and yet another win for the New Zealand Sail GP team. The Kiwis are going to be racing in their first ever Sail GP final. A lot of people up there. They're a Kiwi team. They're not looking at outsourcing. They're the best guys in New Zealand at the moment. And they're on the verge of cracking the F50. We've seen that they can make it to the front of a race and they can hold it there. They just can't put a weekend together. So maybe it's the pressure. Maybe they have a good day one, they have a few good races and then, and day two, it's all over. So if we're 34, then it's plus four. Welcome to the Great Britain Sail Grand Prix final. Australia, Denmark and New Zealand are going to be fighting out for the title. Well, Freddie, we've got huge question marks over the Danish and the Kiwis. First final for both teams, and they're going to be battling out against no other than the almighty Tom Slingsby on a five-event winning streak. Going into the final, this is when the pressure can break a team, but the Kiwis have been together for a long, long time, and no doubt that is to their strength. To get to this point, Pete and Blair have put a lot of trust in their crew. But is it going to work out for them? When you see a boat like that performing that well, you know that competition is about to really take a notch up. Here we go, the fleet approaching Mark 1. It's a great start from the Kiwis. First to Mark 1, they've got pole position, and now it's all about trying to extend your lead. When the wind's dropping from the sky, coming over the hills, uh, there's no way that you can cover another boat or match race. You're sailing your own sailboat race. New Zealand won't hold their lead for long. It's leg two, and Nikolai Sehested is taking the upper hand. Great, great move by the Danish crew. Crikey. For the last year and a half, we've been saying how stacked with talent this New Zealand boat has, and they finally made it to the final, but they're behind now. It is time to show this talent, Stevie. They need to bring it all out. This has got to be the Kiwis' biggest play in Sail GP. I looked back and saw New Zealand so far away and I was like, oh wow, we might have this one in the back now. The pairing of Pete and Blair, there's a lot of trust there built over, over decades of sailing together. And there's a lot of talent as well, like Josh is a world champion, Andy is a world champion, and you've got a couple of Olympic medals on the back, so there's no shortage of um, of making good decisions and there's no shortage of trust there in trusting their decisions. Denmark's approaching the final top gate and New Zealand's way, way behind, some 500 metres away. Oh, Stevie, look at this. The Kiwis have put themselves in the perfect spot to get in this right-hand shift. Denmark's leading, New Zealand's dead in the water and Denmark is going the opposite way to them. The Danish team they're in great wind, they're foiling fast. Now, the way that the New Zealand team gets back into this race is they get a right shift. And what that means is the wind has moved around to the right. And instead of having to make all those maneuvers up the final leg, the New Zealanders just do one turn and they're straight to that top gate. They sail way less distance than the Danish team. And the Danish team comes to the top gate at exactly the same time. Tap. So they've got to turn the boat and the Kiwi team is coming in with plenty of speed. They put the pressure on the Danish team. Danish team don't quite nail a falling manoeuvre, fall in the water and New Zealand just sails straight past them. Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Burling and company, they dance with the devil on the last leg, but welcome to the show, New Zealand Sail GP. The Kiwis take the win in Plymouth. Uh, great job, you guys, great job. <laughs> oh, Jesus. They're gonna be a top team. We've been saying that for a long time. They can't not be with the talent on board the boat. But I actually think that's great for the sport, it's great for the league to have so much talent in this league competing for that top spot, the competition. They're a top team now. Uh, they're one of the top three teams in my opinion and uh, be a real contender for that final million dollar race. Yeah, Team New Zealand, uh, they, they've cracked the code. <laughs> I think we're still miles away from cracking the F50 code. Uh, I think that's the, 
the exciting thing about our group, um, you know, we've always known that we've got some pretty amazing talent on board, um, and you know, we feel like we've got so much more to go from here. So, so the Kiwi team, they've been together for many, many years, but they pushed through this hard period of South GP to make sure that they kept that team together. As a sailor on board, I think you'd be pretty confident with your position on the boat um, because the two guys at the back have put faith in you over the last year and now that you're doing well, they've also got a lot of trust in you. So uh, we definitely know how important trust is on an F50 and especially when the pressure is on. We have always trusted the people we have. We've realised and put our hands up in the areas that we haven't been as good as other sailors out there. And that's been a hit on our ego. But we've realised that we've learned some really tough lessons and now we are sailing better as a team. Pete and Blair have been sailing together for over a decade. You know, three Olympic Games together, three medals at the Olympic Games they've done. They've done the America's Cup together. They've had um, Josh and Andy with them now for nearly a decade as well. If you've been sailing with the same group of people for a long time, you have those relationships that have been built over several years. So they become very indestructible, they become very robust. Amazing times together, we've also been through some really tough ones and that makes, makes you stronger. So, um, you know, as we say at the end of our karakia each morning, homi year, hui year, which is um, glue it together, lash it together, and then say tahi year, which is make it strong. <laughs>